I'm Danny, I'm the Travel Operations Manager at Inspired Adventures. So a typical day on Kilimanjaro would be waking up quite early um, and it's hard to say a uh, typical day just because each day is so different and diverse. So when you start off at the bottom you've got more tropical rainforest all the way up to the top which is more kind of desolate, no vegetation, almost like a moonscape, so everything in between. Uh, but a typical day, wherever you are, we'll be getting up quite early in the morning, trekking up until lunchtime, having breaks throughout then as well, and then continuing on for the afternoon. Uh, and one of the days as well, you'll have an acclimatization day, just where you get to relax as you're going up at altitude. The difficulty of Kilimanjaro, so it is rated a five out of five challenge. Uh, so it's one of our more difficult challenges up there with Everest Base Camp. And it's also the highest trip that we have. So it goes up to 5,895 meters. Uh, so I'd say that the hardest part of this trip would definitely be the summit night. So the rest of the trek itself is reasonable, uh, but it's just making it after four days of trekking for that final night to get up to the summit. You're getting up at about uh, middle of the night. You need to start trekking for six hours prior to sunrise. So it's a lot of trekking in the dark, back to back, very challenging. Plus you've got altitude as well. Uh, so you've got limited oxygen and the cold. Um, so once you get up to the summit, you'll feel that lack of oxygen in your body. Even uh, at the time I thought I was running, I was actually walking maybe a little faster than normal, but very much you do notice uh, the extra strain on your body. So the terrain you'll see on Kilimanjaro, there's five different climatic zones. So at the bottom you've got kind of temperate tropical rainforests with lots of monkeys and different species of animals you might be likely to see. Uh, then you've got up to the more kind of uh, less vegetation zone uh, where it's just like bushland and heathland and then it gets up to where you've got moonscape so it's just no vegetation very dry very desolate very high UV as well so it's always good to make sure you're sun aware and have a lot of sunscreen on at that time as well and then all the way up to the glacier at the very top of the mountain which is really really picturesque and obviously completely different to day one when you're trekking through the forest. The altitude of Kilimanjaro is 5,895 meters so it is the top of Africa or the roof of Africa so it's one of the highest points that we go to uh, it's a pretty cool thing to be able to achieve. In terms of altitude and getting prepared, I myself didn't do any uh, training at altitude. I grew up in Western Australia, which is the flattest state uh, here in Australia, so it's quite hard to get above anything near 350 metres. It's very hit and miss, so even if you're very fit, you can still get it. Um, and even slower people can still uh, not get it at all because they're pacing themselves is definitely the key. So pacing yourself on the mountain and just maintaining a general level of fitness. So doing a lot of runs, doing a lot of training, step training in particular, because you'll be ascending for four or five days and then coming back down for two days. Make sure again, because you're ascending for a number of days kind of upright, you wanna make sure you are training in your boots because obviously your feet will be sliding backwards. Uh, so do train uphill and also for the final two days, it's a lot quicker, but you need to make sure you are descending down a lot of hills during your training. So you get used to your feet sliding forward in your boots because that's where your blisters and sore spots will start to occur. Uh, so make sure again, lots of hill training, multi-day uh, trekking days so we can go out for a long weekend or a weekend and do trekking back to back very very important um, and also just maintaining a general level of fitness and the more training you do the more you're going to enjoy the experience whilst on Kilimanjaro. We don't use any specialized uh, trekking or mountaineering equipment when you're at the summit it is all trekking based so the only equipment you'll need are your good solid pair of hiking boots uh, so definitely with ankle support uh, you want to make sure you've got a lot of warm layers layering is definitely the key because of the difference in temperature from the tropical rainforest zone all the way up to uh, the icy glaciers at the top. You'll need everything from shorts and a shirt all the way up to extra layered down jackets, raincoats for any kind of unpredictable weather that you might get whilst at the top as well. One of the lunches we had um, on day two, we stopped in a cave which was halfway up and we had a spaghetti bolognese meal that the guides had prepared which was really unexpected. We had a full table that was set up by the time we got there with warm spaghetti bolognese that they'd cooked for us on the mountain so it was good food as well. Kilimanjaro is amazing because each day there's such a big team of porters and guides so they did sing a song um, at the start and the end of every day and so it was always good because you could hear this kind of sound echoing across Kilimanjaro and welcome you. And also when we nearly finished the trip on the second last day they did a big presentation of all the tips to, from the group to all the amazing porters and guides that we had. Um, it was a big celebration with a backdrop of clouds behind them on the side of Kilimanjaro, so quite a cool cultural experience and exchange there as well. I learned that as it was my first inspired adventure, just how incredible the groups can be. So each individual had their own story from different parts of Australia and the world and um, like I said, there was some people that were older, some that were younger, different fitness levels. If you're thinking about going on Kilimanjaro, you want to make sure, as it's a 5 out of 5 challenge, that you are going to be able to commit to the training. So 
Again, age is no barrier, as long as you can find the time to do regular training walks and treks. Make sure you're doing a lot of step training. And also, if you've not been to altitude before, if there's any opportunity for you to experience altitude, and also in terms of the fundraising, obviously, um, make sure you've got the time to balance both doing your fitness training and fundraising at the same time.